from Chesapeake, Virginia, the Lighthouse 100.1 presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. Sports Scene presented by Hampton Roads, OnlineMall.com. Sports Scene midweek online, Saturday on the radio and WPMH at 10 a.m. TuneIn.com by typing WPMH in the search bar at 10. Tell your friends about Sports Scene, Twitter at Greg Bick, and you can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com in the contact section. Thank you to our military and our first responders as well. Guest lineup presented by GJBTV.com. Phone line presented by HRSMHOF.com. Sports High Highlights on NNPSTV.com. Sports scene, of course, rolls on right here each Saturday on WPMH. Great interviews, excellent guests, business segments, highlights, commentary, what teased me off. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. We love our regulars, tourists, who listen online and on the radio. Stay tuned. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg bick in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here on AM 1010, 100.1 FM, tunein.com. Type in WPMH in the search bar. Greg Bicavera is glad to have Coach Jones back. We've had him on TV and radio over the years. Just finished his seventh year at Old Dominion. Hard to believe that next year will be his eighth season. And, Coach, I guess the, the key thing there is you are able to finish your season. A lot of coaches were not able to finish their season. Well, that's... That's true. I think I'd rather have uh, not even played that last game, to be honest. Uh, that, uh, that, that wasn't one that we wanted to uh, end our season on. But, uh, yeah, our, our season, uh, unlike uh, many, many folks, uh, you know, was, was completed. When you talk about that too, Coach, this is kind of un- unheralded because back then we really were just hearing about what's going on now, but this has changed recruiting, national letters of intent, uh, communication with your staff. I mean, it's almost like we're all handcuffed with limited access. How are you doing it as far as recruiting? And uh, it's hard to even predict what the future is going to be like. Well, it really is. And I, I think, you know, anytime, uh, you know, as coaches, we, we, we always want to at least attempt to control as much as, as we can con- control because uh, there, there is so little that, that ultimately we, we, we actually can control. Uh, with, with the coronavirus, uh, it, it's thrown everything kind of up in the air. And, it, you know, we are uh, experiencing, a, I, I guess, a, a new norm and, and trying to uh, find new ways to, uh, to, to function, to, to, to work effectively, to recruit to communicate with our players, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a challenge, but it, it's something we're kind of all in the same situation, and you've got to make the uh, the very best of the situation that you possibly can. Right, because sometimes it's hard to engage with your staff and your players, and a lot of these players around the country, they might uh, lose interest. They're not going to school in person, and, of course, it's hard to keep engaged as far as uh, staying, and how are you communicating with your players that are coming back next year? Well, you know, we, we, we talked to them uh, uh, over the phone uh, throughout the course of the week uh, individually. Uh, you know, I, I try. I've got a, a group text that's just myself and our players, uh, and I, I try to uh, uh, kind of interact with them on a daily basis multiple times uh, just to uh, just, just have that, that contact. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not always uh, something serious. I, I might send them an article or – uh, a, a tweet or, or something that I that I see, uh, you know, I might share a thought, um, you know. But we we just try to keep the lines of communication open. We we want to obviously make sure uh, that that our guys are, are doing okay. You know, you mentioned academically, uh, uh, virtual learning is is something that uh, works for some and is is, is a, a, a bigger challenge for others. Uh, you know, so we we've, we've got to encourage them that that that's the hand we've been dealt and. Uh, you know, some of the guys that, that have, have struggled initially, um, you know, they, they, uh, they, they've just got to kind of plow through and work with our uh, academic support team uh, and, and finish up. Uh, classes ended on Monday for Old Dominion. Yesterday was a reading day, and today is the first day of exams. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, approaching the, the, the end of the semester, and, and, and hopefully, you know, our, our guys, uh, you know, will we'll make it through uh, – 
as, as, as best they can. It, it's not always been an easy path, but uh, I, I think all in all, they've, they've done a pretty admirable job of, uh, uh, you know, trying to, to keep up and catch up from an academic standpoint. Before we talk about some of the history of the places you've been to, let's talk about this past season, some of the players that stood out, uh, Curry, Green, Oliver, and Wade, definitely were four players that got double figures a lot and seemed to play pretty consistent. Of course, a lot of them were upperclassmen. A lot of them are coming back as well. Yeah, I, you know, um, our, our basketball team going into last season, uh, I thought we were going to be a pretty good team. Uh uh, one indication that, that I had that belief was when you look at our schedule. Uh, you know, we that wasn't a schedule for a, a, a bad team. That was a schedule with lots of challenges. Uh, and, uh, you know, ultimately we weren't just we, – we just weren't good enough. Um, you know, we, we had enough talent uh, in the first part of the season, but we had chemistry issues. Um, we, we corrected, uh, you know, those, those issues uh, with, with a couple guys leaving. Uh, in, in mid-year, and uh, you know, immediately the, the feel around the team was—I uh, mean, literally—it was from one day to the next was like night and day. The the, the, the effort was better, the chemistry was better, um, and and I thought we were knocking on the door to to be a good team, but we never could get over the hump. Uh, and then you know, ultimately, uh, you know particularly once Jason Wade hurt his knee, we, we just weren't quite good enough. We didn't have enough bullets in the gun. But, but I, I do, I, I, I loved our attitude. I loved our effort. Uh, got a lot of, uh, I think, promising guys coming back. Uh, and so that, that's why I'm optimistic about the coming season. You know, you, you mentioned uh, a handful of guys. Uh, you know, the core that we have coming back uh, is a pretty good core. We just need need to add to that core uh, some some pieces uh, that that will them uh, and and address some uh, some weaknesses we had as a basketball team. Because folks, Coach Jones made the NCAA tournament last year, of course, in eighteen nineteen. Has made the NIT Final Four. Has uh, been the champs of the Vegas Sixteen, of course, and of course as a player at Virginia, and of course as an assistant coach, head coach, went to the NCAA tournament as well as American as well. So really, it, it shows you what a difference a year makes. I mean, a year or so ago, you beat Syracuse, but you know it just shows you one season is totally different from another. Well, yeah, and, and look, we, we lost three starters from that uh, Conference USA championship team. Um, our, our top two scores in, in, in B.J. Stith and Ahmad Caver. Uh, you know, B.J.'s playing overseas, and Ahmad is doing extremely well uh, in, in the G League. Uh, and, and I would fully uh, anticipate that, that Ahmad will uh, get a real strong look by the Memphis Grizzlies you know, if, 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 if the NBA season resumes. Um, but, uh, you know, ha- having said that, you know, even with those departures, um, you know, we, we thought we were going to be uh, uh, a, a team that could challenge for the top spot. But if, if, if everyone's not on the same page, uh, you know, it, it, it affects uh, not just the locker room, but it affects the play on the court. And, and that's something that we, we hadn't anticipated and, uh, we really struggled with uh, in, in the non-conference schedule. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it, it was it was tough last year. Uh, you know, anytime you, you, you don't win, uh, you know, that, that's not a whole lot of fun. But our, our guys uh, that, that finished the season had a fantastic attitude. All right, we're going to take a short break, come back with part two of Coach Jones on Sports Scene after these messages. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Now, back to Greg. All right, welcome back to Sports Scene. Greg Bicavaris also with head coach Jeff Jones of Old Dominion University, Conference USA. And coach, I got to ask you, because a lot of fans are always asking too, how is your health today? Uh, my, my health is, is great. I feel uh, very fortunate, very blessed. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well and just trying to be uh, real smart like, like most folks. Uh, with the social distancing, um, uh, you know, it's a, a challenging time that we're in, and I, I think it's uh, everybody's responsibility to, to help out. It's not just about, uh, you know, our, ourselves. It's about our, our community 
uh, and being uh, as, as safe as we can possibly be. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well and uh, uh, just laying, laying low and, and trying to stay busy with, uh, with, with work, which hasn't, hasn't been a problem, to be honest. Yeah, always staying busy. I guess the scheduling is always, this time of the year, is always something front and center, no matter what's going on. Well, it, it is. We we, uh, we tend to finish uh, our, our schedule, or at least try to, maybe earlier than, than, than many uh, programs. Um, you know, we're, we're done uh, with, with, with our schedule, which is uh, uh, a big load off, uh, so we don't have to worry about that uh, moving forward. Uh, a majority of our time, quite honestly, is, is has, has been these last four or five weeks uh, really, 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 uh, you know, boring down on the recruiting. Uh, we've, we've been fortunate to, to sign uh, three young men uh, this, this spring to, to add to uh, uh, one fall signee. Uh, we, we think that they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be uh, uh, great additions uh, to, to the ODU program. Um, and, and we continue. We've got one more scholarship. You know, we continue to really work hard there. Uh, you know, you got to, in this day and age, we're no different than anybody else. We're keeping a very, very close eye on that transfer portal. Um, uh, I, ideally, if we add one more, when we add one more, it will be someone uh, that, that's either a junior college transfer or a, a, a four-year transfer. Um, and, and, and that, you know, that, that takes up most of our time and uh, traditionally, you know, this would be a time also when you're uh, focusing on the, uh, the 2021 recruiting class. Uh, and so we're trying to do that remotely as, as, as well um, and, and, you know, utilizing the phones and FaceTime and, you know, kind of everything that, that we have at, at our disposal. Uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, the, the just college basketball fans, I, I think, might not uh, really realize um, is a lot of these these young kids, you know, and, and say say the 2021 class. Um, this would be a time, and the summer would be a time for them to be seen by college coaches. Um, the, the the spring opportunities have, have basically passed by, um, and it's looking more and more like the summer opportunities to be evaluated. Uh, you know, won't won't be there either for these kids. And, and so it, it's certainly a school of thought that uh, a lot of the juniors, rather than waiting uh, and, and seeing what happens, might get a little bit uh, jittery, a little bit nervous, and, and might start uh, looking to make decisions earlier. So we've, we've got to make sure that that doesn't, uh, you know, that that's not a surprise. So we're staying in very close contact with the, the juniors, uh, the high school juniors as, as well right now, uh, because we don't, you know, we don't want to lose somebody that, uh, you know, decides to make uh, maybe an earlier decision than, than traditionally has, has taken place. Right. You can't put a price tag on face-to-face communication. One thing is over the phone. One thing is virtual. One thing is the internet and emails, but nothing like face-to-face. And you brought up a good point about the summertime. I remember as a kid, it was so important to me to go to camp. And Barry Parkhill, who you know very well, the former William Mary basketball coach who played in Virginia, used to bring in Gus Gerard and, and Jeff Lamp to the, to the camps. And that means a lot when they see former basketball players at their camps for a kid's self-esteem. Like, I'm going to a program that this coach like Jeff Jones has got a lot of history and roots and that those camps bring a lot of foundation well they they, they do but but quite honestly Greg um, I, I think the uh, the majority of the, of the recruiting these days and it's been that way for a while uh, is, is less on the camp side and it's mm-hmm. more on the AAU side sure um, you know the, the the AAU events that were supposed to occur Last weekend and, and this weekend, um, obviously they, they didn't take place. The uh, the the uh, uh, scholastic events uh, that uh, were supposed to happen at the end of June, uh, I don't see any way that, that that they can you know that they can take place. Uh, the uh, AAU events, including the Peach Jam, which is the most famous event uh, of uh, of the AAU circuit, uh, is uh, uh, likely not to take place, uh, and then finally the, the the NCAA academies that last year um, uh, had their 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 first uh, you know their first year in existence 
I, I don't see how that's going to happen. So all of these kids, you know, they all want exposure. They all want to be seen and evaluated uh, in, in, in these events and, and others. Um, and, and that's probably not going to happen. So if that's not going to happen, you know, how are they going to get on uh, coaches and, 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 and colleges' uh, 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 vision? How, how, how are they going to get on their radar? Uh, and, and, and short of that, you know, I, I think, uh, as I said, certainly some of the kids are, are saying, well, okay, I've got this group of schools, you know, talking to me right now. I'm just going to go ahead and, and the whole, you know, bird in hand is better than two in the bush. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think there's there's some of that thinking going on uh, among, uh, you know, young, young, young prospects and, and their uh, their coaches as well. Right. There's a lot of decision making, academics, athletics, activities, where they're going to live at, who the head coach is. You've had continuity there for coming up on eight years. You were an American for several years at Virginia. So people know who you are. And of course, you've won at Old Dominion over 83 plus games the last four years and postseason tournaments. But, you know, you're right. It takes a village to recruit a kid these days. And they got a lot of different people pulling at them at once. Well, that's that's the thing in recruiting. You 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 know you you want to make sure that uh, you involve and, and uh, engage uh, with with all of the, the the stakeholders, all of the the, the folks that that are part, uh, whether in, in a small way or a big way, uh, of a young man's decision. Um, the, the the other factor, and and, and I think that's where. Uh, you know, things get complicated and, you know, in, in doing things the way we are right now is it, it's not simply about the basketball. Uh, you know, it's about character. It's, it's about personality and, and, and fit. Um, and, and, you know, the way we do things at ODU is, isn't, isn't necessarily for everyone. Uh, but for those, uh, those people that, uh, or those young men that, that share the, you know, kind of the same core principles as, as we do, um, you know, it, it can be a great experience. Uh, and, and so, you know, you, you, you want to make sure that whether the communication is face-to-face, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, over the phone or, or FaceTime or uh, Zoom meetings, uh, you know, whatever it might be, uh, you know, you, you, you want to, to get to know them and have them get to know you and, and, and what it really, really means and what it's like uh, to be a member of the ODU men's basketball family. Right, because you have to have a routine at home, at practice, in school, and on the road. So it really does take a lot. Give us uh, finally your message to the fans because they really did support you this year. Well, they they, they always have, and, and that's something very very special uh, that that we have in, enjoyed and uh, appreciate uh, at, at Old Dominion. And you know, once again this year, and I think it's the fourth time in five years, something like that. Uh, that that Old Dominion led Conference USA in attendance, mm-hmm. and and that's something that you know we we can point to and we can talk about the, the support. But quite honestly, this this past season, you know, it, it wasn't a great season for us. We you know we we had the losing season, and you know we had great kids and we played hard and everything. But when when we lead Conference USA in attendance with the record that we had this year. I think that that says even more than the fact that we led Conference USA in attendance when we won the regular season uh, and, and the conference tournament. Um, you know, our fans support uh, Old Dominion, uh, and not, not just men's basketball, but they support Old Dominion, and, and they come out, and, and there's high expectations, uh, and, and, you know, there's some pressure that goes along with that. But we know that we're going to have – uh, the, the backing of, of, of uh, the, the, the Monarch Nation, uh, and, and that really is special, and that's something that, um, you know, there's, there, there's not a whole lot of teams uh, in, in Conference USA that, that could make that claim. Absolutely, and of course, we all had a big void when there was no March Madness, no NCAA tournament, heck, not even an, an NIT tournament. There was really a void there, and without basketball, without sports, uh, it's difficult. So, I guess, Coach, now just look on to the future, like you said, uh, try to get through the spring, try to get through the summer, and um, start assembling the uh, team for next year, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's day by day. Um, there's mm-hmm. so much uncertainty. We sure. just want to make sure that we, uh, we, we, we win every day. 
Uh, and, and if, you know, if we win today and then we win tomorrow and, and make every day our best day, uh, I, I think at least we're, we're moving forward uh, and hopefully we'll be prepared for whatever eventuality, uh, you know, might, might uh, present itself. Absolutely. Coach, have a great rest of the month of May and, of course, a good summer. And let's hope everybody can get back to normal here somewhat soon. Thank you for this interview today, Coach. All right. Thank you, Greg. And for all the listeners out there, just want to wish them uh, uh, good, good health and encourage them to be safe. Thank you. Jeff Jones, all the best to you, my friend. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 four, and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Highlights, GJBTV.com, HRSMHOF.com, Hampton Roads Online Mall.com, GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archive shows and audio and video. And of course, uh, May 2nd, 2001 will be 19 years since my mom passed. May her memory be eternal. Question of the day, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com to our steam producer and general manager colleen colleen how often do you go shopping for food and essentials during the course of a seven day week probably once and right now i'm trying to get other people to do it for me (laughs) and what about when you run out of paper towels and toilet paper and especially water and you love coke well we keep looking for stuff you know (laughs) some of that stuff you can find but some of it's a little bit more difficult i think my husband just found toilet paper after a month so (laughs) wow sports scene will continue after these messages Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to gjbtv.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Welcome back to Sports Scene. Our regular yearly guest from Elements for Personal Healing is Catherine Dress, the owner and the founder. How are you, Catherine? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Whole new world we're living in. It seems like uh, you and I pretty much stay in touch through Facebook, but uh, a lot has changed in our world that we're living in, not only in Virginia, but throughout the world. Yes, it is. And, you know, I, I, I can't say I'm surprised. Well, I mean, just look what our country is going through. We're not having school. We're not having sporting events. So right now we're hearing a lot of no's and I think the human body and the mind are used to a lot of yeses. Yeah, we we have been pretty much uh, uh, a society that that's on the move, on the go, constantly looking for the the next best thing. You know, what's on social media? What can I do? What's in it for me? And right now, we're all really being called to come back inward and do a lot of of self care and self work. And that's been really hard for a lot of people because we're constantly used to having uh, external things to keep us busy, whether it be, you know, computers and, and television or, or phones or, or other things, you know, constant social bombardment. And so it's, you know, it's been an interesting journey for a lot of people over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. it's a new world we're living in i mean pretty much march was normal the first few weeks and all of a sudden you know we started seeing people wearing masks we started hearing Mm -hmm. about social distancing and and we've heard about uh, physical distancing and my only issue with the word social distancing because you really can put a lot of different spins on it it could mean that you're socially being distant towards people which i don't think is the case But just kind of like when you're at the grocery store, trying to stay six feet away from people. But uh, it it just has a kind of a negative connotation, almost like you're going to a cocktail party, but you don't want to talk to that group over there. It's not meant for that, but it comes across as very strong words. And as you know, in your business, words do mean a lot. They do. I've I've also been a a speech pathologist for 40 years, as well as being uh, a holistic practitioner, and vocabulary, semantics, they're important. You know, if you ever hear anybody go, oh, it's just semantics, that's kind of a cop-out answer because words, you know, are red flags. Words are clues. Um, 
you know, I know when a lot of people, you know, tell me, oh, my gosh, I'm just feeling so stuck, you know, in Chinese medicine, I know that I'm going, you know, going to be working with their liver meridian because liver is, is huge for us being able to digest life, being able to follow our own path in life, not a path that somebody else has been telling us. You know, we're, we're being called to change right now, change the way we think, change the things that we do, change how we think about ourselves and accept ourselves right now, as well as how we think about others and accepting them, too. And so a lot of, a lot of stuff churning up. And, you know, as, as I tell people, I mean, you can either go willingly and surrender to, you know, the greater power of, of what this is bringing. You know, I'm, I'm a Christian, so, you know, I would call this greater power, you know, God in the universe. Um, you know, or you're going to get, you know, dread kind of kicking and screaming, but either way you're going. I mean, we're, we're changing so much. And, you know, the biggest, best things that we can do is kind of take those few minutes for ourselves, not feel like we've got to be on Zoom meetings or, or um, what's the other one, Microsoft Team meetings or whatever. We're constantly bombarding ourselves with the news because that can lead to a lot of anxiety and depression and, and just feelings of being left out. And, yeah, I like, I like the, how you said physical distancing is a better word for it because we are having to physically distance. But we're not socially distancing. We've got other ways now we can communicate with our family and our friends. It's just, you know, in ways that we didn't really expect. And we can really use some, some good minutes each day of just practicing some good, deep breathing to bring us out of that fight or flight mm-hmm. and back into just ourselves and, and being in the present because that's all we have. And, you know, we're such creatures of habit. You know, you look at the teaching profession. The teachers are used to going to school, teaching kids, having a, a schedule, let's say, from in the morning till the early afternoon. You know, military is always disciplined. But so many jobs are nine to five. People working in their cubicle or office used to punching in, punching out, using that expression. Nobody does that anymore. But still, people are used to going to a restaurant and, and dealing with the cashier or dealing with the hostess. All that structure seems to be gone it's almost like when you're owning your own business you're kind of out there and each day can be an island all to itself now everybody kathy is dealing with that yes and some people are not so blessed to have kept their job and so they're having to change the mindsets on okay what else can i do how am i going to make it from day to day and that's stressful other people are going all right i have a job how long will this last that's stressful. So all of that is that fight or flight, that survival mentality. And we're not meant to live in that every day. So we've got to take some time for ourselves and to come out of it and to practice that good deep breathing. And, yeah, sometimes, you know, get those energy sessions so that we can balance ourselves, get out of our own way, and do more than just survive every day. Because there is some good that's happening every day, too. I mean, you're seeing you know, humanity coming around, you know, and, and learning how to take care of each other. You're, you're seeing the world, you know, whether, whether we realize it or not, you know, we have polluted a lot of it. And, you know, it's, it's amazing just how clear the sky is getting. Yeah. You know, even in the, in the places that we haven't been able to see for so long because there's been so much smog. And I can only take that as a good opportunity to be grateful and to just take that minute to go, yeah, I can appreciate that. Absolutely, because, you know, we're all kind of taking for things for granted that we never did, like toilet paper, paper towels, hand sanitizer, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, whatever, or just Lysol yeah. in general. But I think coming out of this experience, whenever that's going to be, and I think we're going to be in this kind of in for a good several months ahead still, is that we're going to be a lot more aware when we go to a restaurant and they allow people in, you know, to make sure that we know we're physically separate. I think this is going to affect us, Kathy, the rest of our lives. And it's supposed to. Yeah. And that, you know, it's not an easy thing to digest, and yet we're being asked to. Mm -hmm. Can we be okay with that? Mm -hmm. Because things are not going to be the old ways that we've done things. You know, that part of our life is gone. You know, are we meant to keep looking over our shoulders to see when the next pandemic is or, you know, when the next, you know, 
tiger attack is going to be or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. no, you know, we, there's, there are times that we, we have to trust that there are other people whose job that is, you know, do the best you can with it, you know, and what, what's best for ourselves? What is important right now in this very moment? Because that's all you have. We don't know what the future is going to bring. We're never supposed to know what the future is going to bring. So mm-hmm. being able to just kind of be with ourselves and just accept, yep, the world has changed. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. know, my whole practice has gone. Luckily, I, I do a lot of distance work. You know, I can work with my clients online, so I can do it via phone sessions or or Zoom or Skype. And I teach a class uh, called Self Care, where you you get to learn a daily balancing technique to help you stay out of that fight or flight. And that has just gone online. So, you know, I had my first class. This, you know, a few weeks ago, and I'm getting ready for my next class in May, and yeah, you know, it's a it's a lot of fun, and it's challenging. I'm I'm one of those I will willingly say I was a technophobe for a while, um, still am, you know, in a way. Uh, but you know, for that, I you know, I had to bite the bullet and, and hire a wonderful IT person to help me get through all of that and get those challenges. So you're never too old to learn new things, and you know. It's you know it, it's a wonderful thing that we're being called to to change and to grow. Mm-hmm. So I you know it's it's how how you're going to get through this, not what you're going through, but how you're going to get through it. Yeah, tell the folks what do you specialize in and how people can get a hold of you. All the social media elements too. You mentioned uh, technology, and you're on Facebook as well. I am on Facebook. I've got you know my business side elements for personal healing, and so you know. I'd, um, you know, I've actually put up my first little videos of just some little techniques of what stress is and, and what people can do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing more. You know, I'll probably do once, you know, once a week. I, the modalities that I use the most are uh, energy modalities of body talk and Acunect. And they work with Chinese medicine and Eastern medicine and, you know, getting those five elements of, of, of life, like right now, we're in, we're in the within the wood element. It's springtime. It's everything is growing, and that's what we're supposed to do too. So we get down to the cellular level. We you know we work with the physical, the mental, emotional. You know, a lot of us are being triggered by by a lot of things from the past, things in our our, our memories, uh, emotions. You know, we've all had stressful moments. Um, I teach the my Acunex self care class. It's a, a half day class uh, that. It's wonderful for teaching you how to balance each of the main organ meridians and what they work with and how to balance the brain. We have a left and a right brain. We have a masculine and a feminine brain. You know, so the left brain is Houston, we have a problem. Okay? That's great for that awareness and that linear ability. The right brain is about, okay, let's deal with what the problem is. Let's just deal with what it is. And that's where your true perception and problem solving lie. So they need to work together. And, you know, I, I love the balancing that, that happens. I've, I've already heard from several of my students, because I've taught this for about the last eight, nine years now. And But my first Zoom class was, you know, just a few weeks ago. And, you know, they, they get to use the techniques right away. And there's a, a wonderful emergency technique that we use. Um, we call it KISS for you know, keep it sweet and simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's an emergency technique that helps with those bumps and bruises in life. And, yeah, sometimes even when we're, when we're sick or if we're just mentally drained, being able to bring you back into that balance, get the pain levels down, and let the body help heal itself. Then it complements the Western medicine. Yeah, I'm, I've worked in hospitals and clinics and schools and everything else for so many years. I'm never, ever going to discount the power of Western medicine. If you, know, if you need something, you know, go work with your doctor. This complements it because it gets you out of your own way of stress and gets that body back into a healing mode. And that's, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. And it's important. It really is. Yeah, you talk about we're out all going hoarding stuff at the grocery store because we don't want to make but so many unnecessary trips, you know. But uh, it's it's kind of well. Like, the initial yeah. hoarders were were in that fight or flight. They were mm-hmm. in that that survival mode of you know of oh my god, you know do I you know am I going to be in there for months and months? You know I, I've got to have all my stuff, and so it was kind of amazing. I actually met a, a woman 
who, uh, uh, you because know, we were standing in, in that line, you know, six feet apart, and her friend works at Sam's Club and said, give it a month. They're going to be bringing all the stuff back that they've hoarded and trying to return it. And sure enough, you know, that was happening because they found out, oh, they can survive. And it, it's not it's not a, a do or die of, of ver- me versus them um, kind of, of thinking. It's we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. And so we all have to have to, you know, act as one in order to get through this so that no more people do die and so that no more people do get sick mm-hmm. you know and give people time to be able to you know get everything you know medically that they need whether it be vaccines or, or testing kits or whatever you know so in a way it's kind of akin to going through a a, a different kind of of war so to speak that you can get ptsd from this because your whole world is changing and humans don't really like change too much. And, uh, you know, that's part of our, our habits, as you said. You know, we're really into old habits, and, and we don't like transition, and yet transition comes. And can we be okay with that? And that's a question we have to ask ourselves every single day, and then allow ourselves to be okay with it. Yeah. And allow ourselves to just breathe into it. Yeah. Because we just, yeah. Got, we just got out of winter, and spring is supposed to be eternal hope and peace and you know the flowers are blossoming we got the beach season we got birthday parties we got cookouts we got sporting events but all that's on pause right now and i think it's tough for people to be on pause because we always have the spring and the summer to look forward to before the weather starts changing again well and yet we spring is still here isn't it it's not sure. like spring went away no. and <laughs> spring is you know it's amazing what you what you just said you know it's a it's a season of hope well it is the season of our, our wood element within spring, and people are welcome to go online and look up, you know, the different elements. You know, they've probably heard of them, you know, wood and fire and, and earth elements and, and water, and that that is one of the emotions that, that those particular organs, liver and gallbladder, do take charge of, and that's why they're, they're the spring of growth. They also work with hope. They also work with anger. Mm-hmm. So anger can work for us, that little frustration we feel when the light bulb goes off and we go, oh, aha, or we can get stuck in it mm-hmm. and always be mad at everybody else for our lives changing. So is that really working for anybody? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I no. Uh, you still don't want to go to bed angry and, you know, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And it's true. Sometimes, you know, you don't get invited to a party or a wedding and you kind of like saying, why me or whatever. But uh, that's, that's, those are two words you hear a lot when you're in isolation is why me? It's not just why me. So then change the question. Yeah. Change the question. Why yeah. not me? Why not me? Yeah, I mean, we're all kind of like, sure, we all got families, but, you know, we spend a lot of time alone, and right now, people are not used to not engaging. We're disengaging, but like you said, with Zoom and other um, mobile assets, we are able to engage at least some. Yeah, and yet it's an opportunity now to engage with ourselves and our higher self, you know, no matter what religion you, you ascribe to or even... If you don't, you know, just the fact of us coming back into ourselves and learning that we're all, we are all one. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, everybody that we come in contact with is a mirror of ourselves. So what is it that we're supposed to put out there? We can be mean and grumpy, you know, like a, when, we, when we get out of, you know, this shutdown, you know, what are the first things people are going to do? They're all going to be out on the road, then they're all going to be, you know, trashing each other on the road and flipping each other off. Well, where does that work? Or did we? Can we understand that driver next to you? Maybe had as equally as stressful of a time as you did. Maybe lost a family member. You don't know that. You're never going to know that person. Can you just be compassionate and send them a little grace and empathy? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right, Kathy Dress five nine eight two zero six five elements for personal healing. Look her up on Facebook, and again, um, look me up on my website. Yeah, look you up on the website. You can also see it on Hampton Roads Online Mall dot com. And this interview will be mm-hmm. we'll share it on Twitter as well as Facebook and social media, and also radio as well, Saturday morning at 10 to 11 right here on WPMH. Kathy Dress, all the best to you and the good people over there on the peninsula. 
Thank you very much, Greg. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. All right, what tees me off right here on WPMH on Sports Scene? Greg Bickavaris, glad you're with us every Saturday from 10 to 11. Tell your friends as well. What tees me off, Colleen? Limited access to government and businesses during this pandemic. It's hard to get a hold of people. It is, definitely, because people are working remotely. Absolutely. When only one lane is open at the grocery store, especially ones that have four letters in their name. Yes, definitely so. I don't understand that because there's a lot of people, but everything now is geared towards online, shopping online, and it's almost like the in-store experience, no matter where you go, is left from 20 or 30 years ago. That's true. Definitely so. Masks are important, but it sure is not fun. No, I, I'm trying not to as much as possible. I mean, one person who always wore a mask was Michael Myers in Halloween, and we don't want to be like him. All right, having to do banking business through a drive through only can be very difficult. 30 minutes. I waited 30 minutes yesterday. Always having to ask this question, boy, it's getting tired. Do you have toilet paper or paper towels? They don't even want to know. They, you can't even ask anymore. Yeah. Um, some stores have a sign out front, yes or no. Uh, no sports going on. It's kind of hard to believe. No sports are going on. No festivals. Nothing public oriented. No outside stuff, that's for sure. This is all what tees me off. People walking dogs, I get it because I love pugs and shih tzus and yorkies. I don't like vicious dogs. Please, when there's kids around or elderly, please have vicious dogs on a leash. Because Colleen, they break that leash from a person that's weak. It can be deadly. Oh, dogs are sometimes scary, but fun. Very good. Yes, they are. I like little pugs, especially. (laughs) All right. Lack of a liquid soap now at most places. You see the old hand bar soap, but boy, is it tough to find liquid soap right now. Somebody's stocking up for sure. Absolutely. That's what tees me off. Stay tuned. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 and one on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. And welcome back to Sports Scene. Greg Bicavaris, glad you're with us every Saturday morning on WPMH, AM 1010, 100.1 FM, and TuneIn.com, always on social media. It's a pleasure to talk to our monthly feature guest, George McLean from the Marksman in Newport News. George, how are you? Doing well, Greg. How about yourself? Very good. Well, it's a way of life now, George. And how is it uh, going on at the Marksman in Newport News as far as retail? Well, we're we're still uh, we're still selling the you know, firearms and uh, you know, ammunition. You know, it's it's a little you know tight nine millimeter is. We've got plenty of the forty. I think forty five. They said was was a little tight uh, you know yesterday. So um, that's that's probably going to be an issue going uh, forward. Um, we obviously still have the range uh, shut down, and some of your listeners uh may be uh familiar with a lawsuit mm-hmm. that happened uh, last week and uh i was a party uh, to that <laughs> but the judge and his you know wisdom uh or lack thereof uh granted uh, uh the, the the range that was in lynchburg uh the right to open back up but his his ruling applied only to that range so it did not apply to any other range in the state. So we're, I'm still waiting for a word back from, uh, you know, our attorney on that. Uh, I think they're going to obviously, you know, pushing it, uh, trying to get a broader, uh, you know, ruling because the, uh, the justification that the judge used to say that, you know, the, the, the shooting ranges were part and parcel of the second amendment would apply to every range, not just that one range. So we're, we're kind of, I, I want to get the legal go ahead versus just you know arbitrarily uh, you know violating you know the, the governor's executive order. Very good, and it's 
hard to tell because sometimes we hear a different message from the federal government than we hear a different message from the state government, and sometimes the city government has their own message as well. Yeah, you know, they they, they need to get their heads together on it, but it's really, my thing would be, uh, in in this type of thing anyway, would would be that the, the Constitution is what governs all of that, and the states can't supersede uh, that they can't take away those constitutional rights. Uh, so it, they just, and even though, you know, I, I know that, you know, the, the governor, you know, they're wanting to be, you know, safe on stuff, but at the same time, they've got to politicize a lot. They, they throw, you know, shooting ranges because they're, they're anti-gun to start with. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they're, if they're able to shut down anybody, and if they're shutting down the bowling alleys and everything else and calling it entertainment and they just arbitrarily, uh, you know, puts you know, shooting ranges, you know, in that. And then, you know, Mark Herring, the attorney general, comes out and he says, well, you know, the governor's trying to keep everybody you know, safe. But obviously the gun industry doesn't think that that's worthy of, uh, of, of keeping your residents you know, safe. And. They had printed that in the paper, and I thought, well, that's that's kind of an asinine thing to say when it's the state that's behind keeping your liquor stores open, so they don't have a problem getting their tax money from liquor sales and, and calling that essential. But yet, uh, you know, you, you would shut down you know gun ranges and prevent someone from uh, preparing to exercise their Second Amendment rights on on a firearm. Suppose you're a new shooter and you just you're buying a gun, and now you've got no place to go and shoot or learn how to shoot because we can't do instruction. Uh, either because that's you got to go on the range and shoot you know, to that to do that. So there, there's a lot you know business wise that that we're still unable to do in, until they uh, they come you know, with a more favorable ruling that applies to just one one range. Absolutely, talking to George McLean from the Marksman Greg Bigavaris Collad, you're with us, and and I'm sorry because I'll say it, I don't have any pretenses or anything. I am a Republican. I vote Republican, and liberals have their own viewpoints on guns george that really republicans and conservatives just don't mesh with yeah you're 100 percent correct I agree. <laughs> you know i've uh i don't know it it, it it makes me spin in my my chair sometimes just trying to you know figure out uh, well I, I i think we've all figured it out but again it, it becomes a, a political you know football and you know they're they're all on one side of, of, of the fence when it favors them, uh, but there's there's no equality going the other direction. And uh, you know, so if, if if they want to you know be safe, then I, th- there's a lot of things that's going on out there that uh, to me would not be considered an essential business that the state is saying. Okay, yeah, uh, it is. And then others that, that could very well be considered essential businesses. You know, you got to go hire an attorney, you know, and file the lawsuit. And but you know, we're still a party to this this suit. Um, and so I've, I've, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, to getting an expanded ruling uh, you know, from the judge on that. George, what are you finding the biggest needs you and your employees during this pandemic? As far as because you're getting a lot more people coming in and they're having conversations about what's going on in their life and what their needs are as far as guns and safety. Well, I, I, safety is, is is a big deal, uh, obviously, and but we don't get you know a, a lot of the you know, folks coming in. You know, businesses, uh, the, the, our business has been you know subdued. Where we're we're getting people in, of course, you got to make an appointment, you know, to, you know, to come in, and because we're restricted, obviously, with the number of people in, in the lobby, if we have a class going on, you, we can only have you know ten, you know, patrons, you know, in the uh, you know on the property at, at any one time. So you know, we've kind of allocated you know five to you know classroom you know instruction because we've got you know contracts and ones with the city of Newport News for your know, training your know, their uh, their folks. And that that is still an, an essential part of uh, of the business, but uh, you know we, we allocate you know, five of those spots you know to classes and and five uh, you know to the to the lobby. So we're getting a lot of you know firearms coming in and transfers coming in where the you know the folks have to you know come in and you know do their paperwork. So we try to to set appointments so you're not waiting around you know in the lobby waiting for a you know an empty spot you know when you you come in if you got appointment at two o'clock you come in at two o'clock and we can get you know get you 
get your paperwork taken care of and you can get your farm and, and out the door. It, but, you know, in, in, in these kind of times when everything is in a state of flux, I think that, that causes uh, a, a lot of folks uh, consternation. And this is, you know, when they they think of their own safety and the safety of their, of their family, and you don't know what you know, tomorrow is going to bring. Uh, you don't know what you know, group of, of folks are going to fly off the handle when everyone's protesting this and protesting that. And how does it affect you and, and your property and your livelihood? So I, I think that's, right now, that's the biggest thing uh, that, that people have a, a, a fear of. It's not that it's not a, a, a fear of this virus taking them out. It's a fear of the virus causing the untoward uh, actions or activities on other groups of people that then infringe upon their their safety at their home. And uh, so I think that's, that's the unknown that people you know, prepare for coming in and you know, wanting to, to buy, you know, these are new folks that haven't currently owned a firearm. We're getting a lot of those coming in and wanting to, to purchase. When either purchase, they want to learn how to, how to fire. So it all gets you know, hooked together, but that's, that's what we're hearing is just that, that fear. Right. Some of that fear with what's going on as far as letting off that steam, a lot of times they could do that in a productive way at the marksman during, you know, shooting practice or just uh, at the firing range. And right now that's kind of gone because of uh, the governor of Virginia. Well, that's, that's very true. And, uh, you know, they, they don't understand how the you know, range is put together, how the air, airflow works. You know, all this is, is geared to where, you know, even without, uh, flu viruses or you know, coronavirus or all this other kind of stuff that, you know, when you're you know, indoors and, and, and shooting, you've got, you know, gunpowder residue and, and lead residue from, uh, the projectiles that's, that's being, you know, fired. And everyone knows that, you know, lead's a heavy metal, uh, so it can cause, you know, health issues if it's somehow consumed. And when I say consumed, I don't mean that you're eating bullets, but if, if you know, you've got it on your, your skin, uh, and you're, you know, you're smoking cigarettes or you're, you're touching your face or your, your mouth, your lips, you can ingest, uh, that lead. And over a long period of time, this is not something that happens, you know, every time you touch yourself after, you know, being on the range, but we're talking, you know, years, uh, sometimes it would, uh, take that long and it could cause some, some health issues. So the, the airflow comes from behind the, the, the shooters and, it, it moves that air in the same direction you're shooting. And then it goes through HEPA filters and everything gets filtered you know, out before the air comes back in and gets recirculated. So it's all all geared for the you know the health and welfare of not only the shooters but you know employees, instructors that we have you know, on the range, uh, you know, same same thing. So anybody, you know, from a health standpoint, uh, when you're looking at shooting in the in the time of this you know, coronavirus if someone's in there and they're sneezing and coughing, that airflow takes that <laughs> takes that all down range. So it's it's going in and, and getting you know filtered out uh, just like you know any of the other you know contaminants uh, you know, would be. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And the governor shuts it down without even knowing the facts that the spacing is already there, the airflow is already there. I mean, you guys didn't just come off a boat yesterday. You've been doing this for a long time, and you've always kept proper spacing. That's something you and I have always talked about. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing about you know, politics. The uh, you know, facts uh, go by the wayside. Yep. Give us all the essentials, George, for the uh, listener out there, for the marksman. Of course, they can Google it uh, right there in the Newport News section, the northern part, not too far from your county, the Denby area. But, of course, um, tell us all the essentials, how long you've been in business, and uh, the hours as well. Well, right now, we're because of what's going on, we're uh, reduced hours. Our, our normal hours had been uh, from 10 until 8, Monday through Saturday, and noon to 6 on Sunday. Uh, but because of the restrictions that we're under, uh, we're doing our, our normal uh, during the week hours. Uh, Monday through Saturday are from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m., and then Sunday we're closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, once everything gets back to uh, gets back to normal, we'll get geared back to our, our regular uh, you know hours. Uh, but that's you know you can. Certainly, give us a call. Eight seven two forty one thirty, and uh, 
ask whatever questions you need to ask, you know, how or, you know, things are going, what's the outlook, but you're probably going to hear it uh, about the same time we would on anything, uh, you know, watching uh, your local news and uh, they, I guess they're, they're typically doing a briefing about every afternoon, uh, usually about 2 o'clock. So anything that's uh, new is happening, it's, it's going to be on the news and you'll see it. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are and until they give us a go-ahead that we can open back up. And once that happens, then we'll uh, transition back to our, our normal uh, you know, hours. The Marksman's got a Facebook page, the Marksman's Firearms Training Center, and, of course, uh, indoor. And uh, what will a customer see when they walk in the doors now? Of course, they'll be greeted by employees, but there's a full showcase of um, products there. Well, right now, uh, you're not going to be able to just walk in the door. You're going to have to knock on the door. The door's locked. And we've got signs on there, and, and, and it's locked to, so we can regulate without having to have someone standing at the door uh, the number of people that's, that's, uh, that's in there. But just you know, knock on the door, and within usually 15 seconds, somebody's going to be there to uh, you know, open the door, let you in, you know, if you want it to you know, come in, look around, shop, whatever. Uh, and since the range is closed, uh, you know, the only avenue that you're going to have is on the left side of the lobby, and that's where the firearms and the ammo uh, is going to be. And, and most of the products that we have for sale, there are a few, some that's on, on the right side of the lobby, but that has historically been uh, where the uh, that particular cash register, and that's where the line starts for the people going on to the range. Uh, so, again, everything is kind of a, a microcosm of what, you know, what normal was uh, you know, a month or so ago. So hopefully we'll get back to, uh, to, to what's normal. But, uh, you know, right now we're, we have to abide by the, you know, the, the 10 folks and more than 10, you know, patrons. That doesn't count employees. That's, that's 10 patrons in the building. And, again, it depends on if we're having class going on in the back. We may, you know, the lobby at that time may be restricted to five. So, you know, if, if we've got, you know, five in there, you're going to be asked to just, you know, kind of you know, wait outside a little bit. Uh, and as soon as somebody leaves, we can get you in. We'll certainly you know do that and get you get you taken care of. True, and of course, I guess the word uh, the marksman's got to tell the the customers is patience because a lot of them love that range and they got used to it. Regulars, newcomers, locals, tourists love going to that range. I mean, and of course, I guess you got to preach patience because there's not a whole lot of places that you just can't go down Wark Boulevard and do it. You know. Well, that's that, that's true, but what uh, I mean, I, I can tell everybody. You know, the, the old adage, this too shall pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we will get things back to, uh, back to normal again. Uh, when that is, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I lost that, you know, crystal ball a long time ago. Yeah. They tell me such things. So, you know, we're, we're in the same boat as everybody else and we're just going to have to, uh, you know, bide our time and, and, uh, make the most out of what we have at, you know, at present. All right. We'll give our best to the staff and BJ and your family. We look forward to talking to you in June and continued health to you and your uh, staff and family at the Marksman. Same to you, Greg, and everybody else out there. Stay uh, stay uh, safe. All right. And, uh, we'll, we'll take care, and we'll, we'll talk to you next time. And don't forget, folks, just go to YouTube, type in George McLean Sports Scene to hear archive shows. Sports Scene will continue after these messages. Sports Scene, Hampton Roads premiere interview show with Greg Bicaveras each Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11. And you look at that, 4-4 four and four at home, which is just average, 4-3-1 on the road. I mean, you're not going to win any games like that. They were not the same team after they beat the Packers, yet the Packers were a totally different team. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter, at Greg Bick, and listen weekly as Greg interviews distinguished guests with excellent commentary and insight. Sports Scene, Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Lighthouse 100.1 FM. Thank you for listening to Sports Scene. I want to thank our great guest today, Jeff Jones, the head basketball coach at Old Dominion, Kathy Dress, as well as George McLean. For Colleen, I'm Greg Bickaveras at Greg Bick on Twitter. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.